What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I've gotten a lot of requests uh, when it comes to my little screen that I have inside my PC. I'll go ahead and show you guys that. I want to show you guys a step by step on how you guys can create that yourself. I'll even put a link in the description on everything you need uh, when you can purchase the actual monitor that you need. I have a little small one but I'll also include one if you're looking for a bigger size. So let's go ahead. I'll show you what I'm talking about and we'll go ahead and we'll get to it. Hey guys, you guys tired of that Windows activation splash screen? We'll look no further. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can get rid of that. All right guys, so it's easy. Just go ahead and head over to cdkeyoffers.com. Go ahead and type in Windows 10. And as you can see, they all come up right there. Go ahead and hit your Windows 10. You'll end up seeing it right here and it brings it up. Just hit that buy now button. Then after the buy now button, you'll go ahead and head you over there to go ahead and purchase it. Make sure you use my code HY20. Hit that apply. You'll go ahead and save you some money. Normally at $17.43, knocks it down to $13.94. After that, you'll go ahead and go into your profile. You'll view your keys. Once your keys are up right there, go ahead and copy that key. Go into your Windows settings, your activation settings, and where it says change product key. Insert that product key, hit next, and enjoy that splash screen being gone. Now you have a fully activated version of Windows. So let's go ahead, get back to the video. All right, guys, so as you guys can see, this is the monitor that I'm talking about. Little tiny, it's actually inside of the 4000 Airflow. So I actually have it to 800 by 400. You guys have seen the video on this. If you haven't, I'll go ahead and put a little something right up at the top. But I'm gonna show you guys how to make that. Just a basic one that you guys can put in there and it'll work. So this size right here is a 800 by 480 but they do make ones that are bigger. So this is a little five inch screen and you can get seven inch screens. But I'll put, like I said before, I will put all of that in the description. So that way you guys can see it. So let's go ahead and get to actually building it. All right guys, so I have this open now so you guys can see what's going on. And what this happens right here is you can see I have my custom display for what is normally in my little monitor, my 800 by 400. So in order to make something custom like this, you're gonna to need to have some software. Like I said, I utilize Ida64. I'll put a link in the description where you can go download that, plus a place where you can go and get a cheap license so that way you can get all the sensors. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to go ahead and open up the sensor panel is you wanna hit File, Preferences, go down to Sensor Panel. You're gonna to wanna to hit that button that says Show Sensor Panel. The main things you wanna do is hit that Show Sensor Panel, Lock your panel size based on the screen size you're using. I have a five inch monitor inside my PC, so that's an 800 by 480 resolution. Then you wanna change the background that you're gonna see behind all this stuff. And then you just push okay. Then you're gonna right click on your panel and you're gonna hit sensor panel manager. As you see, I have a whole bunch of in here cause this is all custom. So what you can do is you can just, just for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it all. Yes. Now as you see the background color that I have was black, now it's black. So we're gonna go ahead, when you're making these, you wanna just think of uh, you know, the basic things you want. Obviously the CPU clock, GPU clock, uh, temperatures and utilization. So I'm gonna show you the basics on there. That way you can go ahead and go crazy in the customization. It's really easy, it's really intuitive, and it's not, you know, you really can just go crazy with it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, wow, this is blank, just hit new all the sensors are gonna pop up right here. And you have different sensor types from you know sensor items where you can make it a bar graph, a uh, static label, you just put a, uh, some words in there, an image like you guys saw on mine, I have an image in the background, uh, you got a graph and then you got a gauge. Gauge kind of being like a, like a tachometer in a car, a speedometer, whatever you wanna say. And it will give a little line. I usually use those when I do my temperatures. So we're gonna go ahead and make a simple sensor item. We're gonna do CPU clock. We're gonna make that 18. You can change your font, but because it's a black, make sure you, you know, if you can't see it, change the color. Make it bold. CPU clock, I'll just take that off. And it automatically will detect that it's going to be megahertz because you are doing CPU clock. So we're gonna go ahead and push okay. As you can see, there it is. Now the CPU clock is going to give you the average of all your cores and give you like your highest boost on whichever one that it picks. As you can see, mine's 3.6 and then it pumps up to 4.85. I'm utilizing a Ryzen 5600X, utilizing Precision Boost Overdrive and uh, it actually boosts up to 
five. So there you go. There's one. You can click, right click it, and you can move it where you want it. Or you can utilize the little arrow keys over here, which change between 20 pixels, one pixel, five pixel, 10 pixel, and then again back up to 20. I find that if you just right click it and move it after you've made it and just put it where you want, it works pretty well. So we're going to do right here. And every time you click a new one, it's always going to show in the left, top left hand side of your uh, sensor panel. So we got your CPU clock. Now let's go ahead and make a GPU clock. Instead of hitting new, just click on your description of the one you just made, hit duplicate, click on the duplicate, hit modify, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our GPU clock. So just scroll down, you see GPU clock. I'm gonna take that off where it says clock, like that, and there you go. It's overlapping, so just move it. I have it on 20, so I can move it. And I'm gonna move it over so that way it's kind of even of where I wanna put it. There we go. So let's go and move it over just a little bit. There we go. Now I wanna do some temperatures. So right here, hit your new. This time, we're, like I said, I like to use gauge for temperatures. Let's show you a little image of your gauge. Let's make this large. Since it's a white, the background, you need to make the letters black. So that way you can see them. We're gonna go ahead and do 18. We'll make it bold. Now your temperature, your minimum value is gonna be zero, your max temperature being 100. I don't want either my CPU or GPU being 100, so I put that as the max. You can show your icon, but you're not gonna see anything because we haven't clicked anything on our sensor. So we need to go ahead, scroll down, till we get to our temperatures. And here you go, here's your temperatures. We want CPU temperature. And there you go, there's your little icon. If you don't want the icon, just take it off. I'm gonna take it off because I'm gonna show you what I do. Push OK, there it is. We're gonna move it. I wanna put it right in the middle. Right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for my GPU and then I'll show you what I do to add a C so that way you have your C. So we're gonna hit duplicate right here, modify. And we're just gonna scroll down a little bit more till you see GPU diode. Push OK. And as you see, remember I told you it's overlapping. If you don't see it, don't worry. There we go. Best thing about utilizing the arrow keys is that it's always going to stay uh, uniform. So it's going to be symmetrical. So there we go. Now I want to add a C right here, right under that. So what you do is you hit new, go to your item type, click static label. I want this to be 18. I want it to be black. I want it to be bold and I'm just going to put C. Now you can't see it because I have a black background, but remember I told you everything is in the top left corner. So just right click in the top hand corner, move, bring it over. There we go. So now I know that's a C. So I'm going to duplicate right there. Actually can go and click move. There we go. Now I know that there's my CPU clock, my GPU clock, my temperatures. Now let's talk about some utilization. So what I like to do for utilization, I usually use a bar graph, but I'll show you a pretty cool way to do it with a gauge. Do a medium gauge. And for utilization, 100%. And you're just going to go, we're going to do CPU utilization right here. 100% white. We're going to change this to 18, like I did before. Change that color to black. And it will have this little thing right here. I'm going to take off that icon because I'm going to add the same thing like I did with percentage, or excuse me, with the C and push, put a percent sign. So now we're going to take this, we're going to move it. I'm just going to attach it like right there. So that way you can see it like that. We're also going to make a duplicate of that one. Click on this, modify. Scroll down till we see GPU utilization. There we go. Boom. And we're going to go ahead, right click, move. Put in the same spot. Boom. Now we're going to do a new, let's do a, like I said, a static label. Make sure you're changing all these so that way you can see them. There, 18, bold, and just a percentage sign. Can't see it, remember, it is in the top left. Move. I'm going to put that right there. That's a little bit too big, so I'm going to modify. I'm going to go through, change that to like 13. All right, that looks better. Move. 
put it right in the center. There we go. And I want to duplicate that. All right, right click, move. Boom. Now I got my percentage of both my GPU utilization as well as my CPU utilization. Pretty cool way, looks custom, looks neat. So to add a background to this, it's pretty easy. All you do is you can go on to just Google, let's say you wanna to wanna to put 800 by 480, let's say uh, gaming wallpaper. All right, we're just gonna find one real quick and put it on there. So go ahead, hit your stuff. And as you can see in here, it will tell you where it's at. I like that one. We're going to save that image. Boom. I don't care what the name is. X out of that. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go and hit new. You're going to hit a image. And it's going to look for it. So it's going to try to find what we just did. So hit your libraries. Pictures saved. There it is. Open. And there you go. It will show it. Now. You don't need to change anything up here. Just push OK. Now it's going to overlay everything. It's going to put it on top of everything, right? So what you can do is you, you already click on it. Go ahead and move up. You want this to be in the background. So there you go. But now you can't see your writing. So go ahead and just change that. So let's see. What you're going to want to do, you're changing on your writing. You just click on them. Go to Modify. I'm going to change that to like red. So instead of that, let's go ahead and do on here, maybe even yellow. Yeah, that way, then you got this, there you go, shows you yellow, or you can move it entirely. So that way you can see it better. Maybe even black probably would work better. So let's go to modify, let's change that to black. That looks better. So now that one, this side's white, this side's black, you have a background. And you can change any of these things. So I like to do a lot of the stuff when you go through and you customize. If you want to do uh, RAM, you know, again, you just I like to utilize uh, RAM utilization, free RAM or memory utilization. Just change it. It's always going to say memory. So let's just make another one that's like a bar graph this time with free memory. So we're going to make a simple sensor item. Actually, excuse me, a sensor item. And that's going to give you the option to do a bar graph. So we're going to do memory, free memory. We're going to change this to 18. We're going to change that. It's going to be black, so that's fine. I don't like to say memory. Let's just say RAM. There we go. We're going to change that, make that black as well. Because I'm going to put this right here so that way you can see it. And we're going to go to bar. Hit show bar. Right now it's going to be a horizontal bar. If you want it to be vertical, just swap these two. So with a 15, make that 100, make the width 15. Right here, I'm going to put zero. And max, I'm going to put, I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to put 3200 or 32K. There you go. You go right here to your label. It already put it in there as RAM. Having megabytes, you could change that to GB to have gigabytes. So we're going to change this, and we're going to make this black. There we go. Bold. Old, general, and boom. There is our graph. So that is white. I want to change that because I can't see the number. So let's go right here to value. Let's change this to black. There we go. 26.5 GB free. And this right here will show you how much you're utilizing. So if you can't see it, just take off on your bar. Take this down to 32. Boom. So free RAM we have right there. But it's obviously, we don't want to say that it's, when it's all the way up, you want it to look like it's, you know, empty instead of where it looks like it's full. So what you do, that's easy. You just switch. 32, 0. So now you're full pretty much. All right, you got free RAM. But in this case, I don't want it like that. I really don't like that. So we're going to say that's zero and that's 100, maybe just for percentage wise. And you can do that. Now you have a RAM utilization right there. You can make this as big as you want, as small as you want, add a gauge to it, however you want to do it, go crazy. But it's really easy. Once you're done, hit the exit button or 
import or even export this so that way you save it. Lock your panel position, hide your sensor panel, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open my sensor panel again, but I'm going to import my current one. So wherever my current one's at, let's see, I think it's in. Let's go to my sensor import, libraries. Okay, let's see, it's on the D drive right there. Open, and there's my sensor panel. Now on this, like I said, you can add pictures. I have the Ryzen, I have my GPU, show my GPU. You can even add FPS. The only difference with FPS, let me go ahead and tell you, is that it utilizes Riviera Tuner. So that's gonna be something you get with MSI. If you're utilizing uh, EVGA's overclocking software, like the, the Precision X1, it will not work with your FPS. They won't show up. So I utilize that. I don't utilize it on here anymore, but I do have Riviera. That way I can see that. So you can download. There are ways to go around it, and it's pretty easy. So once you have it, move this to your other monitor, and you'll be good. But make sure you save it. If you do want to save this, just export it, and you'll be able to export it and save it. So that way if you ever mess up anything or even just want to change it, you can yeah, pretty simple. Go crazy. All right, guys. So if you liked that video, you know, I know it was quick, down and dirty, but I hope you learned something. Again, I will put everything in a link in the description where you can go and check that out. Also, make sure you check out that cdkeyoffers.com to go ahead and take care of all that for you. Get that watermark gone. But if you got any questions, make sure you leave me a comment and make sure if you just stop by, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'm Hyper for Tech. And until next time.